everyone. So in this video, we're going to take a look at K9s, K9S. Basically, it's a command line UI for our Kubernetes clusters. So I'm going to use Arcade to go and grab that. So yeah, it provides a terminal UI to interact with your Kubernetes clusters. Um, so I'm just going to use Arcade. Obviously, there's, there's I'll try and remember to link in a description uh, how to how to get it without Arcade, but strongly recommend Arcade being a Kubernetes um, marketplace for applications. I use it for pretty much everything. So here I'm just messing around a bit with cluster uh, with my clusters, context, etc. Um, actually, I didn't need to. From a K9's, I'm going to call it K9's point of view. Um, you don't need to worry about it because whatever you do within K9's, it doesn't affect your global context. Um, I believe it might connect to your your initial context, but it doesn't affect anything thereafter, for example. So we can switch around, but your global context stays the same. I think that's a pretty powerful thing as well, and you can have multiple versions of it running. So let's bounce into K9s. And as you can see, this is how it looks. So generally speaking, up the top there, you've got your information about what context you're in, which cluster you're in, what user, what revisions we've got as well, um, and a simple little CPU and memory overhead. But then also some common commands over on the right-hand side. Watch your eyes because I'm about to blind you. Um, but yeah, that's going to give you the common commands that you've got. And obviously you can't see my key presses at this at this moment. But I've just hit zero, which gives me all of the pods in all of the namespaces that I have. Now, this is not a very busy cluster, but I think already you can see the power of this in that you can start to see everything that you've got going on in that cluster. So one of the first things to, to take a look at is some of the shortcut keys that we have. So using a slash, that gives us the ability to now search through our page. So if you've got hundreds of pods or hundreds of namespaces, you've got the ability to go and search that. So what I'm doing here in the background, I'm literally just messing around. This is the first time I've literally installed it. So here I can then start to search. I can search for all of my pods that have cast an IO in as a namespace or on the page as it's as such or the auth as you saw there, the auth service that we could see as well. Um, also gateway, we can see everything in there as well. And that slash gives us the ab ability to filter our our content from that, from that bottom um, window. If we use um, the colon, that gives us the ability to uh, choose the Kubernetes resource that we that we want. So if we want to bounce around pods or services or um, deployments, etc., we can do that as well. So here um, you can see that we're looking at, at services here, and we're going to come back to services because I want to actually show something else cool later on in the in the demo. But yeah, really simple stuff. So colon to jump around Kubernetes resources and slash to filter. And then if you use um, control A, that gives you this list of all of the resources in your, in your Kubernetes environment. So one of the things I was messing around with here, thinking, oh, I've got Kasten installed, maybe I've got some policies defined um, I don't have. So that was a pretty boring part of the demo. But ultimately, we'd be able to dive into all of these um, all of these different resources and navigate around and, and get to where we want to go. But you can also see some other things in here, and I think there's some built-in tools, Popeye being one, Benchmarks being the other. Also from here, so this is another Kasten thing, but by any, no means is this a Kasten video. But I can also come in here and I can easily delete items out of my namespace using some of those hotkeys up the top that's defined. I know that that's a dead cluster, so I remove that from my multi-cluster environment. If I hit shift and question mark, then I get this list of other hot commands that we can use, key commands that we can that we can bounce around the, the interface with. So what we've got is we've got that filter, which is slash. We've got the colon, which is choosing the Kubernetes resource. We've got control A, which gives you this long list that you see here. And we can go and search for all of the, the things that we want here. You also see that it gives you that CPU memory 
um, off the top so you don't have to go and run a kubectl plugin or, or whatnot to get that and the other powerful thing is if we want to go and look at the logs for a specific pod obviously we can get access to that without doing kubectl get logs hyphen namespace blah 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 but then also and we don't also don't need to grep because we can use that slash to determine what we want to actually filter out um so here bad example although if you wanted to see what the duration of that that task was pretty simple stuff we can we can obviously put that into here and and understand what what everything was taking as part of that duration obviously better examples out there i'm sure So if we head back into here, and I think this is going to be the question that I have to the uh, to the audience is Popeye. I believe this is a built-in tool, but I want to know, someone mentioned it on Twitter today as well. What does it actually mean? What does it do? So I can see where it gives me a score of percentage. It gives us a scanned amount. We get errors, we get warnings, we get info, we get OK. What do they mean? Um, I'm intrigued as to what this actually means. And does that mean I have 30 scanned pods and I have one error with 29 warnings? How do I find out what those warnings are? Yeah, really interested as to how and what that what that does. And I imagine that benchmarks is a, is a similar um, addition as well to that. Um, the other interesting thing, and I said about this coming back into services, is if I actually select the the correct service then we can actually port forward out from here um without that that command now two benefits to that is one we don't have to take up additional um terminal terminals if we've got multiple port forwarding happening on one machine but then also um just i found it super easy once i found the correct service is that so i I navigate to the service that I want to expose. I go into that. And then I can define what my container port is. And what my local host port or local port needs to be. So in this instance, it's 8000 for the port, uh, for the container port. And it's 8080 that I want to use locally. Doesn't really matter for this instance. And then that's exposed. So as soon as I hit OK... You then get to see down the bottom port forward activated and then we can carry on using canines all good everything's all good but if i now go and open a, a web browser and i navigate to that local host um, colon 8080 slash k10 slash hash then i should be able to authenticate into my caston k10 instance that's being exposed I mean, it's not really relevant for this video, but at the moment I'm using base, basic authentication to get into my Casting K10 dashboard. We also support token authentication, but for the purpose of the demo, it doesn't really matter. <laughs>